Authorize, a show by Amazing Workplaces. Yes, you guessed it right. Authorize is about authors, their journey and their book. Today, we are going to speak to Michael S. Siver. Michael is an award-winning executive coach, author, keynote speaker, and podcast host. He's on a mission to unlock human potential, to help people uncover and live their purpose and live a more meaningful and authentic life. Crashing through conventional boundaries, Michael thrives at the intersection of next generation business strategy concepts, positive psychology, and conscious capitalism. His unique methodology has revolutionized how leaders can live authentically and how organizations engage employees. He offers no-nonsense strategies to help people find confidence in their life's narrative, commonalities across generations working today, and ways to communicate with emotional intelligence. Today, we talk to Michael S. Siever, who joins us from Arizona, United States, about his recent la recently launched book titled, I Know. I Know is a realistic guide to help you find your true being caught up in the myriad of self-doubt and procrastination. I Know empowers you to transition from believing that life's answers come from outside yourself to knowing you can discover the answers already inside yourself. So let us start our conversation with Michael and know a little more about his journey and his debut book, I Know. Welcome, Michael, to Authorize. It's such a fantastic thing to have you all the way from Arizona speaking <laughs> to us about your book. Thank you so much, Ekta. I'm so thankful to be with you today. Thank you. The pleasure is entirely mine, Michael. So, Michael, your personal journey has been truly transformational in nature, and I'm actually keen to know more about your journey and how it got you to got you inspired to write this book. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It, you know, when you, when you open up the book and start to read a little bit about, you know, kind of how I got to where I am today, uh, there have certainly been many ups and downs, kind of like a roller coaster ride. And so I was raised in a really small town in Michigan in the United States. And I worked for my family's landscaping and lawn maintenance company from age 12 until 24. So I spent a lot of time cutting grass and shoveling do dirt and, and doing some really hard manual labor. And the thing that was really hard during those times in my life was that I was never really allowed to be my authentic self, right? I just had to do what my grandfather or my father wanted me to do in their business. So I was kind of like a robot in their business. And so finally in 2003, I got married and I left Michigan and I moved to Arizona. And that was, that kind of started a, a different series of events in my life where I got through this process of discovering who I was, what I really cared about, and as you referenced just a minute ago, found authenticity for myself. So when we came here in 2003, I worked in the hospitality industry at the Four Seasons Resort in North Scottsdale, and eventually ended up at the Thunderbird School of Global Management, where I got a, an MBA in international business in 2010. And that set me down a path of really discovering that I was meant to be a coach. And I had never really considered that much before, uh, but here I am today, right? Owning uh, Seaver Consulting LLC, which is very much about consulting and training and coaching. So after I finished the degree from Thunderbird in 2010, I went to work for Banner Health, which is one of the United States largest healthcare systems. I was the director of talent sourcing for a couple of years, but it felt just like working in my family business all of those years ago. So I decided to leave and start my business as it stands. So for a couple of years, I worked at Arizona State University, was able to do some teaching, was able to do some coaching of some of their professional program students. And in 2015, I formally made the transition to be able to work for myself full time. And as time has passed and progressed, I've been able to move to a place of being able to offer different types of coaching or being able to offer different types of training and consulting. Um, and on my website now, there are so many other resources from uh, media mentions to blogs, to the podcast, to online courses. And so as time has passed and progressed, I've been able to take all of those hardships and those challenges and those things that I learned in those younger years and try to convert them into processes and resources and things to be able to help people become the most authentic versions of themselves. Because when I was young or I worked in certain organizations, I was never allowed to be that. 
So I'm really grateful for the opportunities that I have today to uplift others at those moments of need for them too. Wonderful, uh, Michael. Your journey is uh, actually, you know, really inspiring because, you know, like you mentioned, from age 12 to 24, you were working in your uh, grandfather's and father's family-owned business and doing uh, something like, you know, for cutting grass, which, okay, we all talk about that we should have, uh, you know, whatever we do, we should do it with the uh, interest and passion. But then if, uh, I mean, uh, for a person of your caliber, if you're doing something which is, you know, so much below your caliber, I'm definitely sure that it must have, you know, kind of bothered you a lot for many years. Yeah. It really did. And, and I, I don't hold grudges against anybody for choices that they made or things that they did when we were young. I really, if you read, I know, I really honor that everybody has an earth school curriculum and they're all doing the best they possibly can. But I guess I just realized in 2008 and 2009, when I was at Thunderbird, that we, when I was given a coach as a student, right, we had a coach, my coach was named Pam. And what she helped me realize is that the things that I experienced working for the landscaping company or the things that I experienced working in hospitality was is that I was meant for so much more, but I didn't know it, right? And I had to really go deep within myself and ask myself a bunch of questions to try to get to this place of understanding that I was really worth more, that I had more to share with the world. And that's what I want everybody who's listening or watching your or my conversation is, is that if they take the time to be still and to take some time for meditation or to take some time for journaling, they can probably discover or uncover that their purpose is much larger than what it is that they're experiencing in that moment. Definitely. I think that's a, uh, that is uh, basically what our life journey is about, trying to understand what really are we worth, you know, our true selves, that's what we need to discover. Okay, thank you so much for answering this one. So, uh, okay, Michael, now coming to your book, your book touches on various topics that can help individuals to live up, live up to their full potential. I would really love to understand the philosophies that you discuss in your book. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ekta. It, it, so when I think back to the last uh, few years, I have always known that I wanted to write a book, but I never really had the courage to be able to sit down and actually take the time for it. So thankfully, when the pandemic started in March of 2020, I was able to kind of slow down and really look at my life and say, what is it that I want to do? How do I want to impact the world? And thankfully, my writing coach had just um, had a couple of clients that kind of put off some projects she was working on. So she had some time to support and help me. So in the summer of 2020, I was partnering with a writing coach to help me get I Know out and available. And when we sat down and really kind of talked through what the main thesis of the book was going to be or how it was that we were going to share, one of the main philosophies, and I think I've already said it just a little bit so far, is that the answers, one of the first philosophies is that the answers to life's most challenging or most difficult questions are actually already inside you. And I had to learn that kind of the hard way in 2008 and 2009. And that's what I do today for leaders and people across the world is that I help them realize that they don't need to look to a celebrity or an athlete or a politician or some other person for the answers. It's okay to emulate them, but the answers are already inside themselves. And so what I think is happening right now on earth is that we're moving from what you, what astrologists call the age of Pisces, which ended at some point in the last couple of years, which was very hierarchical. It was very centralized power. Um, we really did believe in something outside of ourselves. And I think we're moving into what's called the age of Aquarius. And so we get to move to a more holocratic way of life. We get to decentralize power. There's much more belief in ourself right? There's much more transparent transparency in society, right? So the first thing that I want people to recognize is that as we're moving from the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius, the best thing that someone can do, number one, is believe that the answers are already inside themselves. They just have to take the time to look. Now, number two, when I think about kind of the core philosophy of the book, and this is what my writing coach and I really sat down and talked through, was is that I believe that humans have way more in common than they think, right? So society is a little bit structured to kind of divide people based on sex or uh, age or race or background or socioeconomic status. And I honor that those differences exist, but I believe that everybody is equal, just a little different. 
And so I want someone to be able to really go through the book and realize that we have this chance to come to earth and learn our earth school curriculum, if we will, and that we should always be honoring each person's curriculum, right? We shouldn't be judgmental or we shouldn't be hurtful towards someone else. We should be recognizing that we're all way more similar than we are dissimilar. Now, the, the third thing I'll say here is that when I really started to think about the thesis and what I really wanted the book to parlay is that I wanted to make it okay to allow for many Western nations to allow for the human soul and emotions to be brought into the workplace, right? I wanted it to be okay for us to be able to discuss the things that were happening at home or our personal issues. I wanted to be able to discuss it at work. And in America, that's called being a staff psychologist, right? Is to be able to have someone on the team that kind of serves like a counselor or a therapist but they're a part of an organization and works in the human resources realm. So I want people to realize that they can bring their personal concerns and issues and events and their emotions into the workplace and get really solid coaching, whether it's from someone on their team or from their peers, it really helps to find a way to blend kind of spirituality and consciousness and just being a human into the workplace. So when we trust our own intuition, when we trust the voice in the back of our head, we're going to feel way more engaged. We're going to be much more happy. We're going to be filled with joy. We're going to be more productive inside the places that we work. So really, at the end of the day, the book is about how do we allow for more humanity to exist in the places that we work so that we're happier, filled with joy, more productive, and really accomplishing the goals that we want to. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. I think that was a wonderful description of what your book is all about. Okay, Michael, I understand that your book is for individuals ranging from CSU down to every level in an organization. So what are the different segments of people who can benefit from your book and how? Sure. So, I mean, anybody on the planet is welcome to read it, right? I'm totally okay with that. But when I really thought about the thesis and I really thought about if I could only have 1,000 people ever read the book in its life, like who would those 1,000 people be? So I got very clear on the avatar of who the ideal reader might be. And I really started to think about someone who's disengaged at work, a little bit unhappy in life. Maybe they feel unappreciated or maybe they feel they're not living up to their potential. Maybe they don't have work-life balance. Maybe they feel restricted in some way, the way that I did when I was a kid. Or maybe the person who wants to read this book to be 100% in control of how they distribute time or where they distribute time. So the book is really designed that if someone's willing to go through the process, right? The book is nine processes that anybody can use to go from that point of disengagement to engagement. And it really does help them to kind of shed old ideologies and to welcome in kind of these new reviews of their own purpose, if you will. So if the reader is willing to really think about their authenticity and how can they authentically navigate life, how can they learn experientially, how can they be persistent and patient as they're opening and awakening, that to me would be like the ideal reader, right, is that all of the things I just described. So I thought a little bit about those folks that were Generation X or those folks that are millennials, because when we look across the world, Gen X and millennials, they're a little bit more entrepreneurial. They're a little bit more independent. Um, they, they're more self-confident than previous generations. They prefer to learn experientially. So it's not that someone from a previous generation can't read it, but I really designed it to be focused in on Gen X and Gen Y intentionally. So if those readers do desire to read it, the things that they're going to get out of it, they're the benefits to them. It's very much about they're going to discover their authentic self. They're going to really define their life's purpose. And as you said already, Ecto, we're kind of at the place where we all want to know what that is for us. So people are going to uncover their authentic self. They're going to know what their life's purpose is. They're going to find their version of happiness and joy or fun. Um, there are sections of the book, especially chapter four, that we can uncover the person's communication preferences, their motivators, their core values, their strengths, their unique value proposition as a leader, right, in their community or company. They're going to get clarity about what to say yes or no to when they're confronted by their life's really difficult or, or tough choices. And they're going to know how to surround themselves with people who genuinely uplift them or who can really hear them or really appreciate them. 
in the last three chapters of the book talk a little bit about being a coach or creating a team of coaches. And so the, the person who reads the book can also benefit by understanding what does it mean to coach yourself or coach those people around you. So I hope for anybody who does read the book that they can pull those things from it. That would just mean the world to me. It would make all of the things that I went through in my younger years or all of the hard work that I did last year, it would make it all worth it. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, so basically, you know, your book uh, is a practical guide. Yeah. And uh, as a leadership coach, you use I know as a guide to coach your clients also. So what are the different ingredients from your book that you yourself pick and choose to help people in the life's journey? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It, when, when I thought about how to design the book, I wanted to emulate a, um, a, a famous management uh, consultant named William Bridges. And he wrote a book called Managing Transitions years and years ago. And the way that Managing Transitions was, was built was that all change is a three-step process, right? You have to end and let go something. Step number two is you have to be in a neutral zone to be able to experience things uh, and try things and just kind of uh, be experimental. And then the third zone is new beginnings. So when I designed the book, I designed it to have three parts, right? So the book is basically nine chapters. And so each of the three parts has three chapters and each chapter has a four five or six step process that can help people move through each of those respective phases. So as a coach at any point in time, I could use any of those processes, right? So any of the nine processes that are found in the book, I could probably use multiple of those processes multiple times throughout the day when I'm having coaching conversations. But the one that, that keeps coming up the most, or that's kind of the foundation of all of my leadership coaching is the material that's inside chapter four, right? So chapter four in the book is very much about five tools that anybody can use to uncover their personal mission, their personal brand. So when I think about me as a coach, chapter four is the thing that I do the most and that I do repeatedly because it helps people to understand communication style, motivators, core values, uh, various things about themselves and their past and their history, their strengths, what a, the authority that they can bring to their job or to their community. So that's the one that I probably use the most. Now, when it comes to other things that I might help someone with, chapter three talks about emotional release. And, and as you and I have already talked about, Ekta, when we think about all of the stress and anxiety and nervousness that exists in society today, Chapter three in emotional release is something I've been doing a little bit more of in the last few months than I had in years previous, but also chapter five, which talks about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is definitely something that helps us to climb the ladder and to become a better leader or more influential. So I probably spend a little bit of time on that piece too. So when I think about the material that exists in the book, the nine processes I can use any of them at any point in time, whether it's as an executive coach, whether it's as a leadership consultant and a team trainer through the online courses, through the webinars that I do monthly. There are lots of different ways that I think I help people, but the kind of core is the material that we see in chapter four, because I think that that's where people can discover themselves the best. Thank you, Michael. You know, that helps us uh, delve deeper into the various aspects of your book and help, help us understand. So it's, uh, you know, becoming more exciting uh, to, uh, you know, for, uh, go through your book. So whoever is actually, you know, right now watching us, uh, you know, on this show, I'm sure they'll be excited enough to pick up the book and go through it. Uh, and before we end this session, I would like to know if you have any special message for your audience. Well, Not I'm the talk, basically, yeah. <laughs> I am, I'm so thankful for you, Ekta, and um, your willingness to, to share a little bit more about my book or even the review that Dr. Prashant Chowan had done, right, with regards to books. So on your website, right, to be able to read that, it meant the world to me, right? So thank you to him. Thank you to you, uh, because it means so much to me that my message can be spread to people and genuinely uplift and help them. And I think what I want people to really remember and take away from your and my time together today is, is that we can all be the person we needed when we were younger. And that to me is, is kind of the one sentence synopsis of the book, because if we think about from our younger years that the, the mentor or the coach that we would have liked to have had back then, and if we can become that today, 
it helps us in so many ways, right? It's very fulfilling. We have a defined purpose. We get to learn really important lessons that help us, helps us to heal some of those old wounds that we might have from our younger years. Because I really believe that all humans have a set of challenges that they endure when they're younger, around age 28, 29, 30, they overcome the challenge somehow. And then the next probably 20 years of their lives are really fulfilling when they can help other people overcome the exact same challenge they overcame themselves. So be the person you needed when you were younger is really about finding a way to help others overcome those same challenges because it is so fulfilling. So I feel immense gratitude that we're, that we're having this conversation or that my message is being shared a little bit more broadly because I really genuinely believe that we are on this planet where we are all equal and I wanna recognize everyone's authenticity, the things that make them different, the things that make them unique. And if I can help in that way, that would mean the world to me. Thank you, Michael. And with that, I want to show everybody my copy of your book. Yeah. And I urge everyone to buy it uh, on Amazon and wherever it is available. Just go online and check it out. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for this conversation. And I'm sure that everyone who buys this book and goes through it would definitely transform their lives. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Subscribe to our channel for latest updates on leadership interviews, webinars and educative videos related to human resources, learning and development, culture, employee engagement, and many more.